What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon review. As always, if you checked out this episode, let me know your favorite moment and your thoughts on the episode in the comments down below. Now, this episode was the first time that we've seen Lily be f the focus of the episode in quite a long time, and it was a really good episode to do that. But it was also filled with a couple of missed points. Now, we're still in this, this little arc of fillers where it doesn't really matter what happened in the last episode and this episode doesn't really have anything to do with the next episode uh, but i can assure you that the next episode things are gonna start to turn up and you can you'll hold that thought until the end when we talk about the preview for next week now this episode starts with the group on ula ula island visiting mount lanakila for the first time at least as far as i know this is the first time they've been on mount lanakila uh, and the Lumio City music is playing. I'm not sure why, but the last couple episodes has had some pretty good throwbacks to music. Whether it being the first gen Pokemon Center music that we heard in the last episode, or today where we heard this Lumio City music. It's just great, great music in the Pokemon world. I wonder if... Do I play an instrument that maybe I could uh, learn how to play some Pokemon songs? Anyway... Um, all the Pokemon and the kids are having fun at playing around the snow. That is, a aside from a group of the Pokemon who just don't handle the cold very well and actually get called back to their Pokeball, which is abnormal. We're used to seeing all of the Pokemon just do their own thing out and about here in Alola, but this episode, they went into their Pokeball. Um, we do get to see a little moment where Sophocles gets bullied, which I'm all for. I'm all for spreading positivity and treating everyone fairly. But Ash throws the snowball, Pikachu hits the snowball, and it hits Sophocles, and I'm all for that. Lily's outfit kind of looks like she's from Russia. It's a very interesting choice of outfit. But Hala winds up coming along with the group, and it was like, why is Hala randomly here? But he, Kukui, and Kiawe are struggling with how cold it is. And they're freezing because you know them. They're, they like to wear their no clothing at all. So they're cold here on Mount Lanakila. But Kukui mentions the blast burn, which... Greninja, all you had to do was dodge one move. Anyway, the intro runs and we see Lily's flying high, the Poke Sled Jump Tournament. So just like in the past where we had Poke Ringer and other games like this, this is another one of those location-based events that we see in the Pokemon world. Kukui, Hala, and Kiawe have now put on some winter clothes, so they're actually going to be warm. And the reason that we're here on Mount Lanakila is so that we can learn about Hala's Crabrawler evolving into a Crabominable, which is such a cool idea. I like that they have stuff like that, where the, the, the Pokemon school travels so they can learn about something specific like that. It was a really cool idea that they had. Uh, but as the group's walking around, they see an Alolan Sandshrew for the first time, and Sophocles spots some footprints in the snow that look that he says he recognizes from somewhere, but nobody can really determine where they're from. Snowball, um, that's Lily's Alolan Bulpix, notices something in the air and runs off to try and find it, followed by Lily. And as I said, this episode did focus a lot on Lily. But as Lily's going to chase Vulpix, this letter comes flying out of nowhere and is about to land right on Lily, but the Alolan Ninetales that's at the front of this sled jumps down and uses Aurora Veil, a very beautiful move. Alolan Vulpix looks great, or excuse me, Alolan Ninetales looks great just as she should. And the sled lands just past Lily. Everybody is all safe. Now, this random person who was not designed very randomly. It was actually a very unique looking character, at least to me. I thought it might be Kahili. Um, maybe in some lore it's like one of Kahili's um, relatives or something like that. But the Alolan Vulpix and the Alolan Ninetales have their moment. I think in the anime, whenever Vulpix and Ninetales of any kind get to see each other, they have their little moment where they, they touch their nose up again. It was a cute little moment, but Snowball wants to use Aurora Veil, wants to learn how to use Aurora Veil, and you'll guess it, that's what this episode was mostly about. 
Um, but Sophocles comes up and recognizes this person as Sarah, a Pokesled competitor who's predicted to be the champion. So she's an irrelevant character. Um, but Rotom is there and now gives the group an introduction on Alolan Ninetales, teaching them that it's Ice Fairy type, etc, etc. And Sarah invites the whole group to come to this Pokesled competition, which is happening the very next day. We flash back over. The first thing that we see is a Sneasel. The mascot has made his appearance fighting against Hala and Crabrawler, a fighting type Pokemon and a fighting type trainer. So in one shot, Sneasel gets blown away and is fainted. I need some respect on Sneasel. I need to see Gladion get a Sneasel. Gladion, get a Weavile. C come on, I need to see some respect here. But as uh, upon defeating Sneasel, Crabrawler evolves into Crabominable and is stomping around and leaves a footprint in the ice. The group looks at it and goes, oh, that's the same footprint that we saw earlier. But that, nothing happens of that. We never see another Crabominable. So it's a very, very weird. Why do they have that footprint? I, 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 I didn't get it. Uh, but Hala then reveals that he actually had one more goal because like, he got there, he battled one person, and he evolved. But he had another goal, and that was to compete in the Pokeslide competition. So Sarah shows up to the where they're all at, shows up to the group, and everyone has recognized her except Ash, of course. Why would Ash recognize her? Ash is not an Alolan native. Now, it was at this time that I realized it would this would be a really cool opportunity for Ash to maybe get his Glalie? Because they were showing a whole bunch of uh, Snover over they were showing a whole bunch of snow runt um and right after i had this thought of man it would be so cool if ash competed in this and used an ice type just as everyone else is and got his glalie but the very next thing i see is a random trainer taking off with a glalie doing their practice for the pokey sled competition so that was a bit of a missed opportunity i don't think ash has called on any of his old pokemon I might be mistaken. But Sarah greets the group that morning and invites everybody to join. And of course, most everybody wants to. But only Lily, Ash, and Kiawe wind up. Lily, Ash, and Kiawe wind up doing it. But Lily, of course, is nervous to try it because Lily's nervous about everything. And Sarah says that she'll help practice. Now, Team Rocket is being shown, and we've been seeing Team Rocket a whole lot more than I think we did earlier in the series. Team Rocket was generally only every few episodes. We've seen them in all of these um, filler episodes here recently. But Team Rocket wants to compete and get whatever the glorious prize is, the valuable prize is. They want to earn that. So Sarah is practicing with the group and shows them what a basic jump looks like. She jumps off. And then lands and the whole goal is for your pokemon to use a move a beautiful move as you're soaring in the air and then and then for you to land the uh to land the jump so ash is first up of course ash just ash loves to jump into things like this does his first jump and lands it but doesn't have pikachu use a move kiawe and turtonator go and yep turtonator's too big for this now lily Gives it her first try and everyone's pumping her up and she gets on there and she does her jump as she lands face first in the snow and is apparently knocked unconscious. When the commercial comes back, it's straight on Ash practicing another jump. Pikachu using Thunderbolt, shocking Ash. But then it cuts to Lily's perfectly fine. But is scared to jump, of course. Sarah comes over and says, hey, when I was younger, I had troubles, etc., etc., and motivates Lily into trying again. So Lily decides that she needs to overcome some of these frights of hers, and she rides on Kiawe's Charizard to overcome her fear of flying, her fear of heights, whatever it may be, practices a jump, and lands it great. She says she wants to use Aurora Veil for the competition and asks Sarah for some pointers. Apparently, Lily's... So, uh, Lily's Snowball, Lily's Vulpix, and knows how to use Hail. I don't, what do they, I like that they're implying that stuff happens in between the episodes. And I guess this was an okay way to, uh, to announce that. But after several hours of practice, the Aurora Veil starts to come through. 
at the very basic level, just standing on the ground, doing a roar of ale. Vulpix is just screaming to the heavens over and over again, and magically all of a sudden it works. And the group heads back to sleep for the night. The next day is the competition. And this is where, again, there was there was a little bit of missed opportunity and a little bit of, of I don't know, I don't know. But it starts off with Kiawe doing his jump. And as you remember from before, Kiawe and Turtonator, Turtonator was too heavy to sit at the front of the sled. So instead, Turtonator was the sled. He was laying on top of it and used his flamethrower to pick up speed and did little twirly, 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 twirly. It was actually really cool. And then they landed it. But the judge, they called in this judge that was judging the whole event. And he kept saying like, oh, when I was younger, I would have flown further. And man, 40 years ago, I could have jumped higher. And 60 years ago, this. And 80, he was so annoying. Like, I don't get, and nobody ever said anything about it. Like, I don't know, maybe that was just a translation thing to make him seem really, I, he kind of ruined a lot of this. Jesse and Mimikyu were up next. And Mimikyu, I, lo I love this Mimikyu. But Mimikyu's using Shadow Ball to speed up, using Wood Hammer in the air as his show off move. But then out of nowhere, Beware comes, grabs them, and takes them off. I need to know what is going on with this Beware. I need to know where it's from. I need to know who. Is it somebody's. Is it someone's Beware? I have so many questions about this beware, and every episode, you know, they say it every time. What is this feeling? I need to know. I need some answers about this beware. But anyway, Ash and Pikachu are up next, and when I, when you when you knew it was Ash and Pikachu, you knew what move they were gonna do when they jumped. So they jumped, and Ash hits it. Ash hits <laughs> Gigavolt Havoc. He actually uses Gigavolt Havoc in the air and Pikachu and Ash go flying because it's way too much power. The last group is Lily and Snowball. They jump, Snowball uses hail, and they get hit with a gust of wind so it throws them off. But Lily is determined and has them use uh, Aurora Veil and it is successful. So they land it. It's a great time. Everybody's celebrating because Lily was able to land it. Um, Snowball learned this new move. Now we just have uh, the last thing, I guess. I, I, I guess I didn't put it in my notes, which is why I forgot it. Um, Hala and Crabominable did go, and they were using some type of belly drum action. Um, belly drum action and to to do their little show off thing. And now it's time for the, the judges to decide who the winner is. The winner is Lily. No, the winner is Hala and Crabominable. But that's okay. It's okay. It was Lily's first go at this. That's fine. Second place was some random trainer with. I think it was an Emolga. Okay. Third place. Third. Don't worry. Don't worry. Third place was. Some random trainer and a Kangaskhan. Missed opportunity. So before those results came out, Sarah actually was there and did her little exhibition jump where she used this beautiful frost breath into a dazzling gleam, Aurora Veil, throwing blizzard, all kinds of moves everywhere and it was amazing and she landed. But then she comes up to Lily after the results are announced and says, hey, are you frustrated? That's okay. Use this as motivation to try again. And that's where it leaves us off. So overall, the episode was great. The, the, the Alolan Ninetales was a beautiful addition. Um, we saw that Snowball knows Hail. Snowball can now use um, Aurora Veil. So that might come into play in another episode. But overall a couple missed opportunities one could have had ash use an ice type he has an ice type that we haven't seen since gen 3 and then the second and third place finishers was just it was just kind of it, it, it was it was missing something but next week next week the preview starts off by showing a buzzwole reaching out of a wormhole Lusamine is back, 
Poplio is there. The Buzzwool gets a hold of a Snorlax and sucks all of his blood out. And Snorlax looks like he got everything sucked out of him. Ash is riding a Garchomp. And Buzzwool is fighting against Pikachu. In other words, you're going to want to be here for episode 61 review, which if all goes according to plan, will be up Friday morning, which I guess this is going to go up Wednesday morning if all goes according to plan. So in two days, we will have episode 61 review and things are about to get turned up again. So anyway, if you checked out episode 60, let me know what your favorite favorite moments and thoughts were about the episode in the comments down below. And we will see you for the next crazy episode when it comes out next week. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.